Tenants you will follow the principles of the Pond City, how they are get, get implemented. So here is again another example when foot is moved in the inversion or adduction, there is a plantar flexion, there is a adduction, and there is a supination and vera seal, which is the typical uh, typical deformity of the club foot. So in this concept, when you move the foot in abduction, this calcaneum and the subtalar joints and calcular deformity of various and corners get also corrected. For example, it's given here, when there is a midfoot eversion, there is always dorsiflexion, abduction, and pronation with the heel is in the valgus. So from this uh, narrow position, you have to bring this patient, uh, this deformity, correction of the deformity by valgus forces and the abduction. So that is called coupled movement. When you implement this first principles of the coupled movement of peripheral joint, with correction of the manipulation of the forefoot, all components of the club foot deformity, which are various inversion and adduction are get corrected simultaneously. When you correct this deformity, uh, to correct the adductus, to the, give the supination and abduction force, you always get correction of the heel varus and heel equinus and midfoot, except the equinus, because there is a rigid tissues in the equinus that is corrected lastly. The second preference is therefore, it is said there is a cavus in the foot, which you, is the, this is cavus is the result of the excessive plantar flexion of first metatarsus, leading to pronation of the forefoot in relation to the hind foot. If you see this foot, this foot look just supinated, but is the first ray of first metatarsus is depressed in comparison to the forefoot. So it is called the pronation twist. You have to correct in the first step this pronation twist and the cavus is corrected by abduction abduction and supination of the fore by lifting the head of the first metatarsal. When you lift the head of the first metatarsal above and in abduction, you get corrected this cavus deformity and there is a simultaneous movement of the ver heel varus deformity which gets corrected. So this was the second principle and third principle is the forefoot is held in supination and gradually and gently abducted more and more to achieve 50 degree of the abduction by stabilizing the talus and you movement of this. First, you correct the supination deformity. Simultaneous correction is there of the abduction and the varus of the heel. So for this, you never have to place a thumb on the calcaneum, but aid the talus head. Because when you fix the talus uh, calcaneum, you will block the abduction or free movements of the forefoot along with the movements of the mid tarsal and the high foot. Therefore, you should not place the thumb on the calcaneum or on the cuboid, but at the tailor head, so that to allow the good movements while you move the forefoot. So finally, when you have corrected the adduction deformity by abduction, there is equinus is left there because the varus of the heel is already corrected. Now some degree of uh, heel is uh, equinus is also corrected. Now finally you have to correct equinus by dorsiflexion whole of the foot, not on the only the forefoot. If you flex, uh, dorsiflex the forefoot only, you may produce a rocker bottom foot. But therefore, movement of the foot for dorsiflexion should be a complete forefoot uh, foot movement dorsiflexly. And the, in 90% cases, more than 80 to 90% patients, because of a rigid fibrous tissue in the uh, achilles tendon, they need a tenotomy.